welcome everyone to our event today. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for attending and welcome all new and returning graduate students to uh, our orientation 2019 on behalf of the School of Graduate Studies and the Graduate Students Union. My name is Sarah Khalil and I'm the EC, uh, the MC, sorry, <laughs> for our event today and the Executive Director of External Affairs for the Graduate Students Union. So, we wish you like a great day, which is the start of your academic life at Memorial University. And our first speaker is going to be Dr. Noreen Goldman, who is the Provost and Vice President Academic at Memorial University. And she is going to give greetings. So welcome, Dr. Noreen. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to begin with a land acknowledgement. This is a very important part of what we do at Memorial. And um, you'll get used to this, and soon you'll know it by heart, I hope. We respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beatic, and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beatic. We would also like to recognize the Inui of Nutatsiavut and Nunatuhuvut and the Innu of Nutisanan and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective he healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. So good morning, everybody. Good. Morning. good. Very good start. Um, and uh, when I was a grad student, I usually wasn't up before 11 o'clock in the morning, so that's, uh, you're getting off to a good start. On behalf of our faculty, staff, current students, and the entire university community at Memorial, I'm so pleased to welcome you, all of our new grad students, and I know that many of you are continuing from your undergraduate programs. Um, some of you might not feel so new. You might have been out in the workforce and are returning to graduate studies. Um, you're all welcome and you're all launching this exciting next chapter of your lives together. President and Vice Chancellor Dr. Gary Kachanowski cannot be here today, but he sends along a warm welcome and best wishes. And for those of you who have come to Memorial for the first time from across Canada and the world at large, Welcome to our wonderful province. The weather you've been experiencing over the last three days, it's like this pretty much for 365 days a year. Uh, okay, I, was, I didn't write in any jokes, so I don't know what that's so funny about. Uh, Newfoundland and Labrador really is a great place to work and study and live, and uh, I'd say that despite whatever weather conditions will follow. For those of you who already call this province home, welcome also, of course, and thank you for choosing Memorial again and staying to pursue the next stage of your academic career with us. Choosing Memorial is a very wise decision, probably one of the smartest decisions you've made to date. Um, and it was a choice, nonetheless, and I want to thank you for deciding to study here. In doing so, you have joined a growing number of students who are staying here in their home province or coming to Newfoundland and Labrador and Memorial from other provinces and countries to pursue graduate degrees. I believe this is the largest graduate student class cohort we've had in our history. Uh, we were, are coming close to or just about to top 4,000 registered grad students. Uh, that's been an ambitious goal of ours for some time, and we're just about living that dream. So thank you all for helping to make that happen. Uh, we have students from every province and territory in Canada, and from more than 110 countries around the world. And this fall, uh, as I say, we're hoping to break all of rec. Well, we already are, because we have the largest class to date. Completing graduate work is without question a truly significant accomplishment, and so uh, first thing you have to do is show up. You've done that, uh, and I would argue keep showing up, very important part of what you do. I was a dean of grad studies before I became provost and vice president academic, and I've always said it's the best job at the university because I got to deal with so many students who are aspiring to pursue their programs 
and uh, interact with so many people well on the way to achieving great things. So I kind of miss that job, but I'm always glad to be here to welcome a fresh new crop, as I am now. And I'm keenly aware, I was a grad student myself, I'm aware of the determination and the perseverance it takes to succeed at this level. But having been accepted, you are already part of the chosen. And so I know you're well on your way to doing great stuff. From this moment on, you're going to be investing a lot of time and energy to reach your goals. And of course, we all want to support you in realizing them. I should add that you are joining a very highly accomplished and diverse graduate student community, more diverse than has ever been the case at Memorial. And uh, you're part of the best and brightest out there. We have graduate scholars, leaders, and researchers doing all the cutting edge work that you're here to pursue. Um, everybody is here to try and influence change and make this world a better place. And all of you are here giving us hope for future generations. Graduate students play an important part in the overall success of Memorial, from significant research and the scholarly work you do to the support and guidance you should be offering more junior students. So you might be thinking about that. Mentoring is both a formal and informal process. And if you see people struggling, undergrads who might come to you for advice, if you are leading a tutorial, for instance, be open to them and realize that the path you're on is one that you can help others on as well and encourage them in their academic careers. You're going to make major contributions to help us build research and scholarly activity at Memorial. So embrace all the opportunities that you're going to have as graduate students at Memorial. There's a lot going on besides what happens in your seminars or in your laboratories. Get to know your peers and colleagues. Support each other. Be kind. Be kind on yourself, to yourself. Explore the university. Get involved. I know you're going to have very busy schedules, but they're not as busy as undergraduate schedules in terms of tight um, uh, or rigorous regimes. So you're going to find a lot of space in which um, you can be filling your life with all kinds of interesting things. We've got lots of supports here, and I'm sure you'll hear more about that, to help you manage and never hesitate to reach out and ask for help. This is a great time to be at Memorial. I believe you've chosen to continue your studies in an exciting and inspiring environment. And innovation, creativity, hard work, all of these are encouraged here, of course. And just as importantly, they are recognized and they are rewarded. I unfortunately can't share the rest of the morning with you. I've got to go off and do um, uh, the undergraduate matriculation ceremonies today, very important. So if you think you're nervous, they're way more nervous than you are. I know that. I'm going to feel all that nervous anxiety in the room, and I will be there telling them about the great weather as well and hoping to break their ice. Um, so I've got to head across campus. I know you're in good hands here. This is an exhilarating time for all of us. And uh, once again, welcome to Memorial. Wish you all the very, very, very best. And um, good luck. I'm excited to hear about all the great things you're going to be doing. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for Dr. Noreen. For now, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Jennifer Brown the Associate Director, Student Life at Memorial University. So she's going to give the welcome. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone. And uh, to echo Dr. Golfman's comments, it is absolutely fantastic to see the number of people in this room. And I know that there's many more still trickling in. Uh, to have that many people uh, choose Memorial is truly wonderful. I am a graduate of Memorial. I did, I realized, as I discussed with some other people this morning, it's 20 years ago this year that I graduated with my master's. So I wasn't 16, I was 25 when I graduated and I just realized it's been 20 years, holy moly. Um, and I'm also in a doctoral program uh, right now. So I can appreciate, um, and I'm one year, I have one year done. So next year when I come to talk to you, you guys will all have one year done and that is such an achievement. Uh, so it is so doable. So I have, I 
I think I have the best job on campus because I'm in student life and I'm not sure if it's up there. Yeah, so there's a number of uh, units that report into uh, student life and they are all there to support you. And so one of my observations over the last number of years is how engaged graduate students are on campus and what a difference that makes for all of our students. So many of uh, the students that are involved right now with our Welcome for Undergraduates are graduate students. Many of the students involved in our Volunteer Incentive Program, it always amazes me how many are graduate students. So I encourage you, when you where there is time, to look and see what opportunities are out there at the university to engage with the university community or even outside in the larger community. I also want you to know that there are a lot of supports here. There may be bumps along the way. There will be nights you wonder why you chose to do this uh, when you're trying to meet deadlines, but it is all worth it and you need to focus on the end goal. Um, but to get you through that, there are times you may need to talk to someone. There are times you might need some financial assistance. There are times that um, you just need somebody there to support you along the way. And all of the units here and really throughout campus, there's so many people here to support you. So whenever you feel like that, please reach out. I truly believe, and I actually am doing my program at another university, uh, but I truly believe this is the best grad school in the country. Uh, I'm a little biased, but I also know the people who work in grad studies, and they are some of the best people that I know, and they care so much, and they put so much effort into ensuring your success here at Memorial. You have made a fabulous choice, and we are thrilled to have you. So welcome. I too have to be on stage in two minutes at undergraduate matriculation, so I am probably going to put my sneakers on that I carry in my bag and run over to the music building, but a sincere welcome to all of you from near and far, and I hope to get to meet some of you over the coming years, uh, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck. So thank you very much for Jennifer. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Danny Farkerson, who is the Associate Dean uh, for School of Graduate Studies at Memorial University, and she is going to give the keynote address. So welcome, Dr. Danny. Hello, everybody. I have to start with a confession. I'm enormously nervous. I really am. Is anybody nervous here? Excited? A little bit between? Please. Show me some love. All right. Thank you. Um, my purpose here is to, of course, welcome you to Memorial University in your graduate program. But my role is also to offer a little bit of advice. So while I would <laughs> love to be very deep and profound, some of my advice might seem self-evident and obvious. But as you grow and pursue your graduate research and your careers after your graduate program, maybe some of this will filter in later on. It's sort of like those convocation ceremonies at the end of an undergrad and there's a keynote and they say all these things. I don't remember anything from any of my convocations or any of those moments. But before I go into that, I would like to let you know that the Dean of the School of Graduate Studies, Dr. Amy Suprenon, is usually the one standing right here, which is partially why I'm so nervous. Uh, but she, at the moment, is part of a global summit in Manchester, England, about e global and international graduate studies. So she isn't here, but she does wish she could be here. But there's a sense that Memorial University is connected to a world an international world of graduate research and graduate studies. Okay, here we go. The other thing I gotta say, everybody's been talking about being a graduate student and things like that. Of course I was a graduate student. I was a graduate student here at Memorial. I did my PhD here. So in some ways, I used at one point sat where you're sitting. Well, not exactly, because when I went to graduate school here at Memorial, this building was a different building and the campus pub was right here. So I did sit here for a very long time. But believe me, I wasn't listening to someone who was strange and had a PowerPoint and things like that. That came many years later. All right. 
So what I'd like to focus on is, of course, success, because you have all successfully and brilliantly made it this far, and we are here at the School of Graduate Studies in the university, part of keeping that success going. And even though sometimes people will joke about graduate school being a game or an infinite game, it is finite and we're here to see you through to the finish line and set you on your paths after your graduate career. So I have basically four pieces of advice. It's pretty simple. Make a plan. I know that seems obvious. Be flexible and adventurous. Communicate. I'll talk a bit more about that and take advantage of the resources that this institution and this city and this province are set up to offer you. So, make a plan. There we go, what's your plan? When I started graduate school, and I've heard this from a great number of graduate students in my years here, uh, my plan was to get in, to start, to arrive, to register, and think, okay, that's good, I'm done. But of course, now in the next coming days and weeks, as you engage in your coursework or you start in on your research projects, those plans are gonna become even more important. And to be perfectly honest, I actually don't care what your plan looks like uh, or what, how it's shaped or how many arrows or bubbles it might have as long as you have one. And it's a plan that I think should reach beyond your graduate life here. Of course, you need a plan as you pursue your degree and work through all the milestones whether it's a research proposal, comprehensive exams, or simply coursework completion, having that plan is important. So it could be linear, it could be color-coded, it could be a circle with bubbles, as I say, but do have a plan. And the other thing about having a plan, a map, for your graduate journey is to share it with your advisors, your faculty members, and for those of you in research programs, of course, your supervisor. This plan is a joint project. You have a life plan, but the university and the degree program you're in also is going to be making markers along that plan. So share it, and I think in so many ways, even in a course-based program, if you're just here for courses and not the longer-term research, you also need a plan. You need to know what courses you have to take. And you need to, of course, ensure that those core or required courses are taken, I advise you, as soon as possible. And then see what kind of options you have, what kind of electives are available to you. And also, and this is part of, if they take anything away from my, my comments this morning, is always think about the end. Plan for the end near the beginning. You're starting, it's exciting, you're in a new place or a new university or a new program, but you've got to think about where am I going to go? What's the goal here? What's the end line, at least in terms of your time at Memorial University? So think big picture, even if that big picture is only one or two or three years. Okay. So you got a plan, but you've got to be flexible. Plans change, right? Success is not linear, it's not straightforward, never has been, no matter what other people might suggest. There's lots of twists and turns and changes, and if there's anything that I see daily and that I experienced myself, is that when you're in graduate school and in a graduate degree program, a lot of life happens, right? A lot of life, a lot of changes for you, your family members, your peers, your home, wherever that might be, and that's gonna be part of your life too. So even though you might have a very rigorous plan and a very clear map for how to get from A to B, you've got to be flexible, and I would say please be adventurous, all right? You're noticing a theme? I've got lots of curls, I got lots of twists, I got lots of turns. Be adventurous, not every unexpected change or unexpected obstacle is necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes they can be a turn towards the better or the more interesting or creative or innovative. So try and have adventure. Yes, the emotional life of a graduate research career is a bit of a roller coaster. 
right? There'll be ups and there'll be downs, but as long as you've got that flexibility and at least a tiny bit of sense of adventure, you will make it through to the end and you will be successful. And we at the School of Graduate Studies will be celebrating profoundly that success when you complete your programs. All right, number two, communicate. I think about 10 years ago, this you know piece of advice would have been talk to people, but in the digital age, there's more than one way to communicate, and there's more than one way to share your experiences and seek advice. But as I said before, if you, do ha if you are in a research-based program, the number one person you should be communicating with is your supervisor. Could be your advisor, but also there's an individual. Every single one of your degree programs has an individual faculty member, a director, or a graduate officer whose responsibility it is is to help you and to talk to you about how to get through to the end of your program with success. But always talk to your supervisor and keep talking to them. It could be over email, it could be over Skype, you could be FaceTiming, it could be in their office. But they're the ones who are there to shepherd you and support you and, of course, also advise you as you go along. Supervisors are great. So a few tips about talking to them. Meet regularly. Hopefully, you've had some contact with supervisors so far. Hopefully, you've got a, an initial meeting already scheduled. But that's not the end of it, right? Especially as you're going through or leading up to milestones, end of courses, comprehensive exams, thesis proposals. If you are this season, for us at the School of Graduate Studies, the fall is also grant writing season. Are you applying for a grant or a scholarship outside of Memorial's own financial funding? You've got to start thinking about it. So meet regularly. Right? Discuss things. Talk about things. Talk to each other about their responsibilities to you and your responsibilities to them. Your supervisors, if you in, are in that relationship, likely have other graduate students. And their time and their energies are going to be div you know, divided at, at certain points, and certainly in your career as well. So talk about what you expect from them, and they will talk to you about what they expect from you and your work. Right? Become familiar, of course, with deadlines. Hmm, I know. Dr. Golfin mentioned lots of time, and there will be time where there are sort of very few deadlines, but always be aware and make them part of your plan when those deadlines exist, right? So you can meet them and meet them happily and successfully. Discuss your research plans, right? And your ideas and your scholarship ideas. The amazing thing about graduate school, and sometimes it happens at undergrad, maybe it doesn't, but in graduate school and your degree programs now, as a graduate student, it's all about ideas, and it's about sharing and those sparks of ingenuity that come out when you have that unexpected conversation. You think, aha, that's it, right? Now, sometimes that aha moment you find out when you talk to your supervisor was done about 15 years ago, but that's why we talk to them, because it can lead to all sorts of other things. Be flexible. I'm going to talk a bit more about our EDGE program in a couple of minutes, but part of the way the School of Graduate Studies is so dedicated to helping you, not only to the end of your program, but after your degree program, is professional development. And I'll come back to EDGE in a couple minutes. I'm going to get Julie to stand up. She's horrified at that. Uh, talk about, of course, with your peers, with your graduate officers, with your advisors, all of the expectations of academic integrity. So for those of you, how many of you here are starting a PhD program? Up, 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 good. And how many of you here are starting a master's? Far more, all right. So even those of you who are in master's programs, I hope, of course, you will consider the PhD when you're done. But those of you starting a PhD program, the expectation is that you will produce original research as part of your thesis and dissertation. So be aware and be very knowledgeable about what constitutes original and what constitutes your research. It's becoming a very complicated world of intellectual property, copyright, co-authorship, and there are resources there to help you, and certainly the School of Graduate Studies, we have experts on board. But do know what what's you're, you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. And finally, of course, 
uh, again, ish intellectual property and data management. Some of you may be involved in research projects that are, have many other graduate students as well. And you will be sharing data at times, and some of the data will be your own, and some of it will be part of your supervisor's work. So ask those questions in those very early meetings with your supervisor about data and your intellectual property. All right? Your dissertation is yours. Your thesis is yours. You own the copyright to that. So make sure that you've done it with integrity and purpose. Now, communicate also with the broader community. Look around you. This is part of your community, your peers and your colleagues in graduate school. Those of us, and you'll meet many of us today and over the next few days in the School of Graduate Studies, the Graduate Students Union are here to also answer questions and help out all the way through your grad program. It's not just today or tomorrow or the first week. We're here for the duration. Right? Talk to your community at large, wherever you're living, in St. John's or outside of St. John's. Get to know this city. How many of you here are new to St. John's? Right. Okay. It is a quirky, gorgeous, crazy, unpredictable town. And so get out there. It is a wonderful place. But I encourage you, especially maybe in this month where the weather's still good, <laughs> uh, to get out, walk around, explore, find your favorite coffee shop, your favorite food place. Where's the best independent bookstore that would be Broken Books down on Duckworth Street? You know, make sure you know how to get to the mall for those shopping needs or whatever. Uh, there's festivals galore. There's events all the time. So get to know your town. Make this place part of your life, and I can guarantee you the city of St. John's will be all the better for it. Okay. Now, if you are a little more introverted, which I am. I am an introvert. My palms are sweaty. I'm dying inside right now being in front of all of you. But if you're a little bit more introverted or you're attached to your phone or your desktop, please know that the Graduate Students Union and the School of Graduate Studies, we have student bloggers who are constantly putting great blogs online on the School of Graduate Studies website. And these are a resource as well. So even though I do encourage you to get out and walk the city and enjoy the city and the campus and get to know it, you can do a lot of communication and connecting with others online and on the internet. I don't discourage that. It's how, how I get my news. Now, resources. Jennifer Brown said a few things about general resources for all students at Memorial, but there are a couple of really important ones that are only for you. These are for graduate students. And I think one of the best ones is our dean. There she is behind the little arrow. That's Dean Supernom. She started last year or two years ago, I can't remember, uh, the Graduate Students Commons. So this is an online resource. Every single one of you will be automatically registered in this Commons. And it's an online resource and chat room. It's through what we call D2L or Brightspace. You'll be introduced to it. But there, there are toolkits. There are qu question and answers. There's all sorts of ways to talk to the Dean of Grad Studies and talk to each other. So you might get something about this and think, oh, I don't need it. But I encourage you to pop in, browse around, see what's there. The dean is constantly updating it with information, announcements, all sorts of things. So the Graduate Student Commons is your digital online resource for community. There's a little sample just of some of the topics that she's already covered. And again, you'll get an, if you sign up for notifica notifications, you'll get a little ping on your phone when there's new things that have been loaded into the Graduate Students Commons. All right. Then, of course, there's us at the School of Graduate Studies. The School of Graduate Studies office is in this building. It's actually just behind this theater on this floor. And there is a room with a team of the most experienced, most dedicated, most informative individuals about graduate life. Everything from your funding, to registration, to convocation, to thesis submission, there's someone there who can handle it all for you. So get to know the office, find us all there. But again, our website is also an excellent place to take a look. You are all now current students. Prior to today, you might have been looking at, you know, become a grad student or new students. 
Now you're current, you're ours. And so check out these pages. In particular, this one, which is what we call our EDGE program. So I'm going to get Julie to stand up for a second. Come on. This is Julie Bowering. She is, there you go. Say hi, Julie. <laughs> Julie Bowering is our dedicated professional and career development advisor just for graduate students. This is her job and her role and her passion to see all of you through your grad programs, the EDGE program, which is Enhanced Development Graduate Experience. Uh, it's th there's resources there to help you with your grad program, thesis writing, uh, grant proposal writing, all sorts of public speaking things, but also to help you start thinking about what's next. So join, take a look at the website, but also sign up on Twitter. Follow Edge on Twitter or on Facebook. There are an enormous amount, there's a huge suite of webinars and workshops and seminars and guest lectures. And no, no, no one expects you to do it all. But if at least you know that it's out there and you're seeing the announcements about what's happening, I can guarantee you there'll be at least two or three every year that you think, yeah, I'm interested in that. So sign up, follow it, join it. Julie is available to meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, but now is the time to start thinking about what's next as well, okay? So there's the EDGE program. All right, here's the specific advice. This is me. Well, actually, no, I stole this from the dean, actually, but it's a really good one. All right, I'd like you to say it with me. Back up your data. Back up your data. Back up your thesis. I'm not hearing you. I want back up your presentations. Oh, yes, back up your computer. Yeah. <laughs> Have any of you had a computer crash? Right? Okay, I've had a computer crash, and I'm still not the best about backing it up. But it's so much easier <laughs> now. I'll tell you, this is going to date me. When I was writing my thesis, I was so terrified of losing my drafts, I would put my disks, because we had disks, in a Ziploc bag, and I put them in the freezer of my apartment. Do you want to know why? Because it's the last thing that burns down in a fire. <laughs> That's how I backed up my thesis, all right? cloud, <laughs> a Dropbox, <coughs> you know, remote hard drives, all of that is, makes it so much easier. Back it all up. Back up all the things. That's my advice. All right. The other one I want to speak very, yep, beware of imposter syndrome, right? This morning at 5.22 when I woke up in a panic about talking to you today, I thought, I can't do that. I'm an imposter. I'm not, oh wait, no, I have a PhD. I'm the associate dean. No, it's okay. It's okay. I do know a couple of things, but do be aware that all of us at some point do begin to wonder if we're really meant to be where we are. I'm here to tell you, you are meant to be here. Dr. Golfman talked about you as the chosen ones. You've been picked, you've been selected, you've been made offers because you're great, you're awesome. And so if you do feel at a certain point you're not cut out for it or it's not right for you, I urge you to acknowledge those voices and then put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer of your apartment. All right, because it ain't gonna burn down. It ain't, you're gonna be great. All right. I do have some idea of what I'm doing, and none of you are the crazy dolphin. That's Katy Perry from Super Bowl. Yep, dating myself. Here's another element. If you're not sure what imposter syndrome is, one of the symptoms of this is that you think all the compliments you, you receive either come from someone who is lying, they don't really mean it, or from some nice relative who don't really know what you're doing and are just being nice, like my mom. Okay. If you receive a compliment, if you do well in something, if you earn a, an award or a distinction, that's because you've earned it and you do deserve it. Being here today means you deserve it. You've earned it. All right. You are awesome. You have skills. You have intelligence. You have knowledge. And I'm hoping a good sense of adventure and flexibility. 
All right, that's it from me. I promised I wouldn't go too long, but I'm going to ask you all to take note of our Twitter, our Facebook, our website, all of those addresses, because the School of Graduate Studies and the GSU, we're here to help and we're here to support you, and mostly we're here to really celebrate when you finish those degrees and you cross that stage and you're hooded by the Dean of Grad Studies upon completion. So have a great day. I'm around. I got my Ask Me sticker on. If I don't know the answer, I know somebody who does. All right, have a great day and thank you very much.